Today on Legally Us, Prince Harry is headed to trial. Travis Scott is accused of being tone deaf, and Cardi B is involved in a battery case. Plus, we're breaking down the explosive allegations against Lizzo as her dancers file a lawsuit against the singer and claim they were pressured to pose nude. We've got that plus so much more in today's Legally Us. Everyone, and welcome to Legal Yes. I'm Christina. That's, of course, Nima Romani, president and CEO of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Welcome back, Nima. Thanks, Christina. Excited to be back. What a week. What a week. And let's get right into it because I know that um, West Coast Trial Lawyers is handling this case because this is huge. This is really big news. So three of Lizzo's former dancers are suing the singer, accusing her of creating a hostile work environment and allegedly pressuring them to participate in a nude photo shoot. So the dancers, Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Noel Rodriguez, filed the lawsuit against Lizzo for the hostile work environment religious harassment, disability discrimination, sexual harassment, and more. The suit names Lizzo, Lizzo's tour company, Big Girl, um, Big Touring, and dance captain Shirlene Quigley. So um, according to the court documents, the group alleged that uh, Quigley displayed sexually inappropriate behavior towards them. The dancers also alleged that during a trip to Amsterdam, Lizzo invited the dancers to the red light district where it wasn't a mandatory event, but the dancers felt obligated to attend in fear of losing their jobs. Um, they said that while they were there, that things got out of hand. Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the new performers. Um, and it kind of goes on and on. And um, they said that they, they were fired because of budget cuts and things like that. So wh what other shocking allegations stood out to you in this lawsuit and kind of break it all down? Christina, there's so much going on in this yeah. case, and I encourage everyone to read the complaint. But for me, the most shocking allegations relate to the sexual harassment. You're talking about sex shows and dildos and bananas and dildos and vaginas and bananas and vaginas. I mean, you have uh, an employee, a male employee is naked. He's being whipped by a, you know, a female performer who's also naked. You have, you know, one of our clients, Ariana, who's forced to touch one of the new dancers. So this is just completely inappropriate in any workplace. But, you know, for Lizzo um, to essentially, you know, compel her employees to participate in this type of activity, I mean, it's unlawful. And the reason sexual harassment laws exist, Christina, is to protect employees because there's such a disparity in power. So I can't be a creepy boss and, for instance, ask one of my employees on a date because you know what? That employee may be compelled to say yes. You can't say no to your boss because you're worried about getting fired. Right. Yeah. And it seemed like a lot of these women feared that they would get fired because they wouldn't participate in, in other things. And what's also interesting about this, too, is that, you know, Lizzo was all about body positivity. But it seems like some of these women may have been body shamed or fired if they actually gained too much weight to be on the show, uh, to be, you know, on the tour and things like that. So, there, like you said, a lot of things going on in this lawsuit. So how do you feel Lizzo and her team? What do you feel like their reaction was? How do they respond to these allegations? What's kind of their next move? So they haven't responded yet, but mm -hmm. I fully expect them to deny the allegations like most defendants do. But you're right, Christina, you know, Lizzo puts herself out there as, you know, symbol for, you know, plus size women. But really, our clients are women of color who are plus size and actually participated in a reality show, two of them to become Lizzo's dancers. So imagine they're super excited. They view Lizzo as a role model, their way to break into the entertainment industry. Yet you have someone who is body shaming them, fat shaming them after one of our clients told her candidly and in confidence that, you know, she has an eating disorder, that she has depression and anxiety because of it. And guess what? After she tells Lizzo that, she's fired two weeks later. So, you know, these women are devastated. They thought, uh, you know, the Lizzo that you see on TV and the Lizzo that, you know, is on when the cameras are rolling would be the same Lizzo. Um, and would treat them fairly. But unfortunately, it just wasn't the case. Hey, you kind of mentioned that they're devastated. How are these women feeling now that their story is out there, that this a lawsuit has been filed? How are they feeling? They're feeling better because other employees, current and former women have come forward saying, hey, this happened to me too. So you know, some of them want to remain anonymous. Others are you know, willing to come forward and testify. But there's really strength in numbers. And you know, mm -hmm. similar to the Me Too movement that, you know, really address rich and powerful men, you know, th those aren't the only people that can harass or discriminate against young women, especially the young women of color who really were in a position where um, their boss was 
you know, discriminating against their medical condition, um, forcing their religious beliefs on them. Um, you know, there are racial issues and, of course, the sexual harassment. So I got to tell you, Christina, they are beyond devastated. They lost their job, something that was their dream job. And they're really trying to pick the pieces up right now. Right. So what are the dancers looking for in all of this? And how do you think this case will be settled? Is this I'm obviously this is very detrimental to Lizzo's career as well. So how do you how do you feel? How do you foresee this panning out? We never know. Most cases do settle, but this is one I can easily see going to trial because sometimes you know, entertainers, whether it's just denial or narcissism, they're unwilling to accept that they maybe have done something wrong. So we'll see. You know, does Lizzo come out and deny all this and dig in her heels? Then we're going to litigate this case and we're going to go to trial. Or does she come out and issue some sort of apology uh, for how her and her management acted towards these women? Then maybe, you know, there's going to be a resolution possible. So really, the ball's in Lizzo's court now, and we'll see what she and her lawyers do. And that'll really determine whether this case gets litigated or tried. Yeah, it's a big case. Definitely a big case. All right. Well, moving on to Cardi B. Um, she has allegedly been caught up in the center of a battery case after she threw a microphone at an audience member during her um, appearance in Las Vegas on July 29th. The Las Vegas Metro Police Department confirmed a battery had been reported by a woman just one day after the altercation occurred. They said on July 30th, uh, an individual came into the police department and to report the battery after what happened on stage. So um, a concert goer threw water at Cardi B, Cardi B, B then threw the microphone. So when somebody reports a battery like this, will could Cardi B be arrested? Will she have to turn herself in? What's kind of the next steps for Cardi B? Yeah, it could be a prosecution. It'd be a misdemeanor battery because a mic isn't a deadly weapon. So you're not going to get that uh, felony type filing. But you know, w- when you're dealing with a case like this, re- really the question is, you know, was Cardi B acting in self-defense, was she using reasonable force? And at least what's being reported is that Cardi B asked the audience to throw water on her because it was hot. It's July in Las Vegas, and it gets well over 100 degrees. So if that's true, if Cardi B consented to the initial battery, it's not a battery. And in which case, her response, throwing a microphone, would not be self-defense, would be an inappropriate use of force, and would actually be a misdemeanor battery. So would she have to pay a fine to this person that, um, you know, came forward and filed the report? So there's two components, batteries, uh, both a civil claim, a tort, and it's also a criminal. Mm. Uh, it's a criminal, um, it's a crime, and it's, there's potential criminal penalties. So, you know, the individual can sue for, you know, any emotional distress or medical bills or anything that she suffered. That's going to be a civil lawsuit. And Cardi B can be prosecuted now. I don't think Cardi B is going to go to jail for a case like this, but, you know, maybe she'll have to, uh, if she does plead or guilty or no contest, this is the type of case that might end up in probation or some anger management, something to that effect. Interesting. All right. Moving on to Prince Harry. We've been talking about this nonstop, but it seems like, and it seems like we're going to be talking about it a little bit more because this trial yeah. is um, headed forward in early next year. And this is without the phone hacking claim. So London's high court ruled that Harry's lawsuit accusing NGN, which owns the son can move forward but the judge did throw out the phone hacking allegations for being too old. So they said that the Duke of Sussex was actually aware of the British phone hacking scandal and um, and he could have brought these allegations up sooner. But he said that he couldn't file this because of a secret agreement between the British newspapers and the royal family. They said that there wasn't this secret agreement. Um, and so meanwhile, this fell out of the six year time limit for legal action. So why would Harry seem even move forward with the phone hacking case if they knew that it fell outside of the six year limit? Well, Sheena, it was a tough, tough argument because of the statute of limitations. You know, there in Britain, it's six years. And, you know, the British Parliament looked into this. There was a commission that found you know, these violations by the British press. So what Prince Harry tried to argue unsuccessfully was that, you know, there was some sort of tolling agreement or that he didn't understand his right to sue. And therefore, the clock didn't start running because, you know, there was some agreement between the royal family and the press where, um, you know, the members of the royal family wouldn't file this lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And the judge said, no, no, no. Everyone knew about this. You know, you're a sophisticated person. You have lawyers. You should have known about your rights. So the clock started running as soon as you became aware. There wasn't this fraud or cover up that pre- prevented the statute from running. So right. those cases were dismissed, but we're still going to get a trial because a lot of cases settle. But I think this is the type of case where the prince really wants to send a message. You know, he does not like 
those British tabloids is a very antagonistic adversarial relationship. So I think he's going to push this case to trial to teach them a lesson. This isn't yeah. about money. This is about justice. Right. Do you think Harry's going to uh, take the stand then? And like you said before, um, he's probably not looking for a monetary, um, a, a big monetary amount. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt, but um, I'm sure it's yeah. it's more about the principle. I think so. And I think this type of case, you have to take the stand. You have to talk about how you were hurt, what your damages are. You know, this isn't a, you know, a criminal case where the, the right to remain silent or anything like this. this is a civil lawsuit. So if you're going to bring a civil lawsuit, I don't care if you're suing Lizzo or you're suing uh, the British tabloids. You have to take the stand as a plaintiff. So that's what's going to happen in this case. Definitely. All right. Well, um, lastly, the lawyer for the family of 10 year old boy who was actually killed during Travis Scott's Astroworld concert is blasting the rapper's team for accusing police of trying to sabotage his new album with the release of their investigation. So the lawyer of the family told TMZ for an artist making his living with music, these are stunningly tone deaf comments about the preventable tragedy that took so many lives and injured so many. So uh, Travis's attorney said that the release of the Houston Police's department. Um, almost 1,300 page investigation was initially timed to hurt his new album, Utopia. His lawyer then backtracked on that, says, as we said before, the Houston police report confirmed Travis's concern for his fan safety. Uh, the report contains the same exact evidence that was presented to the Houston grand jury that decided there was no basis for charge against Travis. Do we think that the police department would actually release a um, an investigation to hurt somebody's album sales? No, absolutely not, Christina. I don't know why Travis Scott's lawyer said that. That makes no sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And probably why the lawyer backtracked because the lawyer realized, hey, this was a stupid thing to say. Right, definitely. Um, you know, the the investigation said that Travis was kind of cleared of any wrongdoing, but he is being sued by families. Do you think that he will have to pay up in this instance? And are you surprised that he wasn't, um, you know, charged with anything else? No, I'm not surprised. And this really shows the difference between our criminal and, and civil justice as to, you know, under criminal law, there really has to be some knowledge and intent most of the time for there to be criminal charges. So for, whether it's murder, obviously intend to kill someone or, or even manslaughter, you really have to act really recklessly, you know, for instance, knowingly getting behind the wheel of a car when you're consuming drugs or alcohol, you know, you might not want to kill someone, but that's knowingly reckless. You know, in this particular case, I think there is evidence that Travis Scott and his you know, production team and the venue and all sorts of people were negligent, but that's a much lower standard. That's saying, hey, you weren't careful. You don't need knowledge intent for a civil claim for negligence, but you do need that knowledge and intent for a crime. That's why I think we're probably going to see some sort of civil settlement, but no criminal charges here. Lots of big news this week, Neiman. It's good to have you back. <laughs> Thanks so much, Christine. Excited to be back, and I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.